In this video, we're gonna talk about 10 things that you need to know about the SECURE Act that are gonna affect your retirement, but not just that, also 529 plans. So stay tuned for 10 tips on the changes that are coming in 2020. But before we do, if this is your first time at our channel or you haven't subscribed, click on the subscribe button at the bottom. My name is Travis Sickle, Certified Financial Planner, helping you reach your financial goals. So I wanna talk about these 10 changes that are coming that are gonna affect your retirement plans and your 529 plans. But before we do that, let's talk a little about the SECURE Act. Now I've done other videos on it and I'll go into more in depth in future videos onto each one of these points, but this is just gonna be a brief overview of the most important things that I think you should know. Now the SECURE Act for 2019, it's actually an acronym and that acronym stands for the Setting Every Community Up for Retirement Enhancement Act of 2019. But as I said just a minute ago, it's also for 529 plans. So it's super important that you look at all the points because they might affect something in your life, whether it's retirement or college savings plan. Now, change number one has to deal with RMDs, required minimum distributions. And if you don't know, when you're age 70 and a half, you're required to start distributing money from your retirement plans, such as IRAs, 401ks, 403bs. Now, that is being adjusted from 70 and a half all the way up to age 72. Now, 18 months might not seem like a huge amount, but it actually is a lot more than you might think. So it's gonna help tremendously if you don't need access to those dollars at 70 and a half to give you an extra 18 month to start those RMDs. Gives it a little bit more time for your nest egg to grow. Change number two that's coming is removing the restriction on when you can contribute into an IRA. So currently, you can only put money into a traditional IRA if you're 70 and a half or younger. So the cutoff is 70 and a half into that traditional IRA. Now the benefit of doing this, if somebody is working past age 70, and a half has a few thousand dollars of income, they can put it into that traditional IRA and not have any additional tax consequences. Now, with Social Security and pensions and current income that you might be receiving, this will help control some of those tax obligations and delay them to a future date. Of course, you're still going to have the RMDs after age 72 at this point, but controlling your taxes could help you tremendously. Change number three, and this is going to affect all part-timers. So if you're a part-timer who's working about 500 hours a year for three consecutive years and you're over the age of 21, then your employer has to offer you a retirement plan that you're eligible for. So if the company has a retirement plan and you've met those criteria, 500 hours, three years over the age of 21, then you also have access to a retirement plan. So if you're doing something seasonal, then you now have access to a retirement plan. Change number four. I really like this change because it's giving you the flexibility to have greater access to your retirement accounts. Now, what this change is gonna do is if you have a birth or an adoption, you can now access your IRAs penalty free. Now, a traditional IRA is still gonna have tax consequences to it, but just knowing the fact that you can go into your IRA and take up to $5,000 out in the first year that you had a child or the first year of adoption, then it's gonna give you that incentive to start that retirement plan. Because if you're thinking, well, do I put the money in a retirement plan, but we might have a kid, so if we have one on the horizon or if we think we're gonna be pregnant and then have a kid, I wanna have access to those dollars. So you might be thinking, well, I can't lock it up in a retirement plan. Having this added level of flexibility in the IRA could give you that little incentive to start contributing into the IRA. Now, if you can avoid taking the money out, of course you're gonna be better off, but just knowing you have that flexibility, I think is a huge benefit and a great change to IRAs. Change number five has to deal with annuities inside of your retirement plan. Now, previously, retirement plans such as a 401k did not have annuities, and mainly that was driven from the fact that the liability was on the employer. And annuities traditionally are really complicated. So they didn't wanna deal with them, they just wanted to stick with the ETFs and the mutual funds, the, the typical things that you see inside of a retirement plan at work. But now, shifting that liability from the employer to the annuity company makes it a little bit easier to do that. So they'll be able to put annuities 
easier into your retirement plans. So you're going to start to see some of those options. But that doesn't mean it's right for everybody. And they're also going to help control some of the fees, having no surrender charges. And hopefully we'll see a completely different product of annuities. Now, there are a ton of different annuities out there. So depending on what your plan offers will matter. So make sure that you're doing your due diligence. Look a little closer at the annuities to make sure that it makes sense in your particular situation. Because for some people, it makes a lot of sense and others not so much. So look a little bit closer before you jump into this new annuity option, but it could be just right for you. Change number six has to deal with auto enrollment into your retirement plan at work. Now we've already seen this auto enrollment feature in retirement plans, but the change that's occurring is the maximum cap of 10%, that's the maximum that you can auto enroll into, is going up to 15%. But there's a catch, you can't do it in the first year, it's gonna be the maximum or the minimum amount of time that it's gonna be implemented is over a two year time frame. And this makes a lot of sense. If you're just starting out saving, you, you might not be able to save full 15% into your retirement plan. So if you get that first paycheck and you see 15% taken out, you might be a little shell-shocked. So this change is gonna gradually increase it so you are incentivized to save even more. And the auto-enrollment feature will probably be rolled out to more and more plans moving forward. So just be on the lookout for the auto-enrollment feature. Change number seven has to deal with small business retirement plans. Now this is gonna be a tax credit for the startup cost associated with those plans. And it's gonna be up to $5,000 for three years. So that means a total of $15,000 in total credits in startup costs. Now not all plans even have that or even remotely that expensive to start, but depending on the plan and the planning of plan size will depend on the costs associated with those plans. So if you are a small business owner looking to get a retirement plan, this might be the time to start to get that tax credit and get that boost. And the second part of that is getting an additional $500 credit just for using the auto enrollment feature. So in point number six, you heard me talk about the auto enrollment feature, and this is the reason why you might see more auto enrollment because the small business owner is gonna get a $500 tax credit just for having auto enrollment. Change number eight, Eight is making modifications to the multi-employer plan. Now, if you're not familiar with a multi-employer plan or a MEP, it is a pooled investment for a retirement plan. So if two or three different companies want to share the costs, they can pool those investments together or pool their plans together into what's called a multi-employer plan. Now that cuts down on the liability, the paperwork, and helps streamline a lot of the retirement plans. So this is going to help streamline it even further. Now, MEPs have been around for a while in different forms, and I've seen them used with a lot of small business owners, but this is going to help streamline the process and hopefully reduce some of the costs associated with retirement plans and help boost retirement plans in general. So look out for the MEP and pooled investments because those are great options if you're a small business owner that's looking to join a 401k but doesn't want to deal with some of the paperwork and the liability associated associated with it. Change number nine. Change number nine has to deal with the elimination of the stretch IRA or drastically changing it. So it's gonna be cut down to 10 years. So previously, you could take those distributions of an IRA and stretch it out over your lifetime. It's similar to the RMD calculation that I talked about in point number one. So if you inherit an IRA, then you might have to take it over your lifetime. But now it's gonna be compressed down to 10 years. So you just wanna be aware of these changes that are coming with the IRA or the elimination of the stretch IRA so you can better prepare for it. Now there are a few loopholes to maintain that lifetime distribution if the if the beneficiary or the person that's inheriting the money is a minor, disabled, or has a chronic illness, then you might qualify to continue those distributions over your lifetime. But otherwise, you're gonna have to take those distributions in a much shorter time frame over a 10-year period. Change number 10 has to deal with 529 plans. Now, the big change here is you could take up to $10,000 and pay off those student loans. Now, I've been talking about this all year, this change that was coming, and it's Finally here, I actually almost thought it was already here, but now you can use the 529 plan dollars to pay up to $10,000 of your student loans. In addition to 
that. You could do it for K through 12. It's expanding the 529 plans being used for K through 12 to apprenticeships and homeschooling and additional qualifying expenses. So look a little bit closer to figure out what expenses that you can use the 529 plan for. In addition to that, you can also use the 529 plan to pay your student loans of your siblings up to $10,000 each person. So if there's three kids, one 529 plan, that's 30,000 into student loans. But just be careful, you can't write off those student loans or that student loan interest debt on your taxes and use the 529 plan dollars. You just can't double dip. But if you're using just the 529 plan dollars, you put those aside. And if you have additional interest expenses that you're paying, of course you can use those as a deduction. You just can't use them together. So you can't double dip. So those are the 10 changes for the SECURE Act of 2019 that's going into effect on January 1st of 2020, but it's gonna be implemented throughout 2021 and beyond. So you wanna take a little bit closer look at the SECURE Act of 2019, see how it changes your retirement plan and of course that 529 plan benefit. That is a huge change. So look a little bit further. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe and leave your comments down at the bottom.